And when do you take a break? I don't got no time for breaks right now. I be trying to take a break. I really want to um, take a break right now and go to sleep, but, <laughs> you know, it's the grind right now, though. I got to do what I got to do. That's what I you know what I realized? Not every guy that is in your past is considered an ex. Some of them are really considered a Y. Cause you look back and realize, why did I even give him a chance? So no, he's not your ex, he's a Y. Why does anyone talk about going from a relationship where you were just completely love bombed, very unhealthy, but you were completely loved bombed and it was beautiful to now going out there into the dating scene and talking to people that are normal. I'm looking at it like, okay, so you're not going to text me every five seconds of the day. You're not going to get upset if I don't respond back to your text messages. You're not going to be sending me cute little flowers and gifts and stuff because you're just thinking about me. You're not going to stay on the phone with me for 18 hours a day, even though that's quite unproductive and quite unrealistic, just because we love each other so much. You're not telling me that you love me after one week of knowing me. You're not going to introduce me to your family after one month of knowing me. <laughs> We're not going to talk about our kids' names and talk about getting married and all of this stuff after knowing each other for like two seconds. That's crazy. Why are you not obsessed with me already? Like, why are you not beating down my door trying to be in my space? Wait, so is this normal? Is this how like normal people interact when they're just dating and trying to get to know each other? They're not like obsessive after five seconds of knowing that person. No one talks about the difference. Because you think everyone's like that. That's just love and it's cute, but it's not healthy. So now I'm just like, I'm not going to give anybody a chance because you obviously don't like me enough because you're not literally doing all of those things I said before. When in all actuality, that's not normal. It's over for you thoughts. It's over. It, it, it ain't that time. It's over for y'all. The, the other thoughts made it bad for you. That's probably the most annoying thing that you do. It's like, I want to have a fight, and you're just like trying to resolve it within the first three seconds when I'm still in fight mode. And I'm like, for goodness sake, just fight a little bit. Like, please, just, just give me something. And he's just always trying to just make things better. It's so annoying. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. Because what she's saying is like, she need turmoil in her life. She needs drama. She want to fight. This guy's too nice. He's too perfect. He's trying to make it right i don't want it to be right i want to fight i want some drama <laughs> that's the thing about women bro they love drama if a dude is just plain jane boring mr fix it mr right mr let's resolve it he's no use to most women because most women don't want a good solid dude let's keep it a buck that's why they like dudes who is rough around the edges, you know? They like bad boys because they feel like they could turn that bad boy into a good dude. That's the whole game. They meet a player, they want that player to turn into a dude who is just only dealing with them, even though when they met the player, he had a bunch of chicks. It's all a game for them, dog. That's why they be trying to trap you. That's that's the end goal. The end goal is you getting on your knees and proposing to her like, baby, I'll give you the world. That's why when a man proposed, she <laughs> cry and she, because she won. That's what it is, man. She won. That's how it goes. So with this guy right here, she knows she already won. And her mind is like, damn, dude, give me some pushback. I want to fight. I want to go back and forth with you. That's why nice guy never wins, bro. <laughs> Y'all don't give women that fight, that pushback, that drama, that turmoil, that toxic shit that they crave. All because y'all just make it so easy for a woman, dog. That's the whole thing with the whole nice guys, man. Y'all just be making it so easy for a chick. Y'all don't want to check her. Y'all don't know how to put her in a place. So that's the main difference between the good guys and the bad guys. A woman see a bad guy in her mind if i could get this guy to change for me to commit to me i won but if they meet a good guy is like mm, he's doing everything right mm, really too much to fix there um well at least i could say i'm a wife but there's no turmoil there there's no drama there that's why a lot of times she's gonna leave your ass if you a nice guy that's just what it is man crazy out here but nevertheless a bitch gonna leave your ass regardless but the thing about if a chick dealing with a player 
player, a player stays on a woman's mind because she feels like she could try to change this dude. Whereas with a fucking nice guy, she ain't thinking about your ass. Your ass boring. It's crazy out here, fellas. Be smooth though, for real. Hey, bro, I ain't think I have to be the one to tell you, but you can't be lazy and make it. The ones who grind, get it, period. You can't be sitting here every day being piss poor expecting to be successful. That's not how it works. Every single day is clockwork, grind. And what you do is not gonna cut it. So don't be sitting here surprised when you live in an average life because you're doing average things. Simple as that. If you sit next to an, a high performer, you will outperform by 15%. So a high performer just in your proximity will increase your performance by 15%. If you sit next to a low performer or underperformer, it will decrease your productivity by 30%. So every B player you bring on board is not just decreasing their productivity by 30%. It is that energy transfer, which is that everybody around them becomes a little bit less productive. Always remember that women are the embodiment of emotionalism. The way she felt about you yesterday or the way she might feel about you today, it is not guaranteed that she might feel like that for you or about you tomorrow, okay? So just know that any and every bitch is knockable. Now, no matter how long you have her, even the people that you looking up to, uh, that you looking up to, that been having that bitch 10, 15, and 20 years, every bitch is knockable. Don't you ever think, you understand me, because of how much money you got from abroad or how much game you got and how long y'all been together, you know what I mean, that she gonna sit up there and take that money out of her hand and give it to another man. You know what I mean? These women, man, you understand me, are governed by emotionalism, feelings. Feelings have expiration dates. The Word of God even told you in Jeremiah 17 and 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. These women are governed by their hearts. They don't even know what the fuck they're going to do. So for a man to say that I ain't never going to get knocked or, yeah, if he didn't have that bitch for so long, you know what I mean, that, you know, I ain't no sense of sweating her. You know what I mean? You are already mentally defeated. Don't you ever be fearful of another man's pimple. Oh, man, you know, I can't sweat her or I never knock her because Pete driving a Phantom. Or I never knock this bitch because Pete got a Ferrari. Or I never knock this bitch, you know what I'm saying, because Pete got the brand new S550 coupe. Nigga, please, you would knock his whole group if you got some pimping with you. And truth be told, the nigga that got a large following like King... Excuse me, do you speak English by any chance? Yes. Yes, you do? Yeah. Um, like perfectly? Yeah. I was wondering, do you know where I can like um, find your number? My number? Yeah, I want your number. Um, uh, okay. Okay, what's your name? Irene. I'm married, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice are, you to meet are you single? Um, it's complicated. Um, oh, yeah. you're, you're taken. <laughs> yeah, I'm taken. You're taken. Okay, we could be friends. Oh, okay. Good as day, Gandia. Yeah, I, I speak Spanish. <laughs> ah, do you speak Spanish? Yeah, I do speak Spanish. Yeah. No, I say it to Ledo. To where? To Ledo. Where is this? I'm here in Madrid. Okay, okay. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm just visiting here. I'm trying to make new friends. All right, awesome. Uh, your name, I'm terrible with names. Irene. Irene. Eric, mucho gusto. Okay, nice yeah, to meet you. I'll be on standby whenever you break up with your boyfriend. Okay. All right, bye. Damn, son, it's that easy for another man to fuck your girl. See, this is why like, you can't wife up a chick who is mad bubbly, mad friendly and shit because she naive. It's easy for a dude who got the gift of gab to talk his way into her panties. You see what I'm saying? Like any chick who is mad friendly, bubbly, open, dog, don't wife up a chick like that, bro. Fellas, but this is the reality, man. This is why as a man, you always got to pay attention to the signs. You always have to observe your girl. Girl, bro, you always got to pay attention to her. But the reality is, this is something no man could stop. A chick could come across a dude who could slick talk his way into her panties. That's just the reality. That's just the reality. But as a man, you can't really focus on it, man. Just focus on yourself, self-improve, work hard, and just pay attention to the signs. That's the most you could do. But this could happen to anybody. But the bottom line is how easy it is for another dude to fuck your bitch. Just think about that. Because you never know when your girl is going to come across a dude that she like. And depending on how disciplined or loyal she want to be that day it all depends like let's say if you had an argument like with your girl or some shit and she's mad at you 
and then she bump into a dude that she likes or she thinks attractive. She probably gonna give him her number. And he probably gonna fuck her. Especially once a chick hear that, oh, you're in town for a few days. Oh yeah, he definitely smashing. He de because she thinking, oh, I could do this and get away with it. I could go fuck this dude and get back to my boyfriend and he's gonna be gone. That's matter of fact, in case y'all don't know, that's an easy way to like smash a chick too, bro. Like if you tell a chick, yo, I'm just in town for a few days, she's thinking she could easily fuck you and get back to her boyfriend, bro facts like i know mad dudes who smash chicks like that but for let's keep that in mind man i right? just be aware be aware out here let me tell y'all about my date on saturday this man ran off on the bill lit like he ran off on the bill we went to i was eating i ate before um so i was meeting up with him at a bar in houston and um the bar i mean it's a club like i mean it's not a club like it's a bar with loud music um we sat down. I found the table. I used to work there. So, you know, they're going to give me a table. Everything's going to be good. Woo -woo -woo. We were at the bar first and um, I drink, I drink shots. I drink straight shots when I go to settings like that. I don't drink a mixed drink. I don't do mixed drinks. Only mixed drinks I do are lemon drops and that's at dinner. Um, but I had straight shots. This man, we're going to sit down. We're sitting down. It's cool. Woo -woo -woo -woo. We're sitting, we're sitting, we're vibing. This is like a, like, you know, you have to sing the song, you know, sexy, right? Coming on. Da -da -da. Cool. He has been blowing my phone up for a week. Uh, I met him on Bumble, but when he got my number, I seen messages already from a year ago. So he knew exactly who I was. And I had no, I couldn't remember who it was. I didn't, like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And so he knew exactly who I was. And he made it his mission to take me on a date. I was suggesting stuff like moxies, like, let's go to a dinner type of setting. But you want to go to a bar. So I'm like, I don't do the clubs. I don't want to go to a club. I don't go to clubs. So let's go to this spot that I used to work at. Um, pretty popular spot in, mid in Midtown. So we go there. Um, we're enjoying ourselves. We sit at a table that I literally got people up for us. Oh, we're ordering, like we're drinking. I'm drinking shots. I'm taking shots. And this is like, obviously this is a bar. Like, duh, you're supposed, the objective is to get drunk. So I'm, I'm drinking, I'm drinking, drinking. And it comes a point where he got up and went to the bar to get a Dos Equis. That threw me off because I was like, why didn't he just wait for the waitress? And I feel like, you know, sometimes waitresses are slow, but I feel like if like, this is my friend, my waitress is the friend. So you could have, you, if you wanted a Dos Equis, you could have just told me like, tell the waitress to give me a Dos Equis, you know, whatever. Like he's telling the waitress, like, you know, like, um, bring like she's gonna, I was in the bathroom one time when a shot came out and she was like she said I want a warrant so I'm like okay I'm not thinking I, I, this is not something I would typically date no but I have been on a mission of trying new things like try it out like you never know. so as the night is going by I mean it's cool he he doesn't sit back down but he like stands up like against me so I'm sitting down and he's standing up against me so I'm like okay like okay like I'm still singing a song getting drunk and lit at this point and he tells me in my ear that, oh, he's going to go get his friend. And I'm like, where's your friend? And he's like, oh, he's outside. I'm like, okay, tell him to come in. And she, he was like, oh, he doesn't want to come in. So I'm like, okay, make him come in. Why, like, why do you have to go outside to go get him? I just never heard that excuse. I thought it was very weird. And so he goes, he goes outside and the waitress comes back. And I'm literally like, he just said he was going outside. Go make sure he's outside. And I'm telling her, like, go make sure he's outside because she already told her, I don't know this man. And so, um... She's like, she goes in there. She's like, yeah, he's outside. And so I'm like, okay, he's talking to somebody. So he wasn't lying about that. And so um, I tell her again because time is passing, and I'm like, this is weird. Um, and he's like, uh, I mean, he's. Uh, I ask him where he's at. Like I text him where he's at. Doesn't respond to me. And I ask her like, hey, go make sure he's outside because you're like, there's a tab. Make sure he's outside. And I'm not about to go outside and go look for him because there's a tab. Like I'm not about to do. Like, I'm not about to be. I don't want nobody blowing my phone up behind it. I ran off on a tab when I was trying to find this dude. But so I stay there and I enjoy my night. And um, time passes by, and I'm like, this is weird. And she texted me. She's like, be better make sure he uh, didn't leave because I don't see him no more. And I'm like, what? And so I text him, no response. So as the as the time is as the time goes by, I'm like, no, this man did not run off on the tab. No, this man did not run off on the tab. I have never had this happen to me before. So I'm sitting here like, where is this man at? And so I'm texting, I'm texting, I'm texting, I'm texting him, no response. And I'm like, oh, this dude is a classic, classic. And this is exactly why you don't date people you're not interested in in the first place. I and I literally. I literally was holding this date off for a week because I didn't want to go. But everyone kept saying, try something new. Try something new. You never know. It might turn out great. And I, this is exactly why you date people that you're actually interested in. Where you find attractive, like, that is my type. This dude was no way in shape or form my type. And for me to go on a date that you begged me to go on for a week, you've been blowing my phone up. This man has been calling me, FaceTiming me, calling me. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, I cannot, I, can, I really can't believe right now I'm getting played. And so I'm just like, wow. And I, obviously I paid the bill, but I wasn't happy about paying the bill because I could have just, like I said, I was eating beforehand and I had a couple drinks there and um, like I was eating dinner. I could have stayed at dinner instead of going on this date with this dude that was going to run off on the bill. There was like, if you, like you could have said something, you but you were just walking out, smooth walking out with no explanation. It's just like, why, why did you make me come? Like there was no point of me coming. And I am going to post his face in here because you're a trifling. Dating in Houston is at the bottom. Like we are in hell. Like this is, this is insane. Like, and this is why I literally y'all date people 
that you are actually interested in. Date with a purpose, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm going to keep doing that I did before, before I took a chance on a date. That really, like, this is this is what happens when you don't really like somebody, but you're trying to try something new because everybody keeps telling you, well, maybe it's your type. Just try something different. If you haven't yet, go get you some of that merch. Y'all already know, don't feed the birds. That's what it is. We don't feed the birds over here. So if you rock with your boy, go get you some of that good merch.